So in this video, we're going to talk about scope. And when we refer to scope, we mean where is a variable valid and you have access to it. So before we jump into that, we're going to give a little bit of background to this quick project I set up. So I have a struct here, and a struct is just a person, and a person has a name, an age, and it has a school they, they attend. Now it's an optional because they might not currently be enrolled in a school. And there's a function that says had birthday. If they've had a birthday, their age goes up by one. Again, very straightforward struct. So if we look at our um, main storyboard, I've got a very simple app that has the name, age, and school label, and then places to put those values. We're not actually even gonna run this app, we're just gonna look at the code to take a look at scope. So let's look at our view controller. So you see we have outlets for the three labels, and then in our view did load function, we created a person struct, right? So an instance of that person. Uh, we have the name Cardi B, age 28, and since I'm not aware of Cardi B being in school right now, the school for her is nil. And then I've set the name and age label to those values. All right, so again, stuff we've done a thousand times before. So let's say I have a function that I wanna write in which I wanna add one to Cardi B's birthday. I don't want that to go in view did load, so I'm going to write that function here. So um, I'm gonna write a func increase age. And what I would wanna do is I'd wanna increase that age label. So the first thing I need to do is, well, the person has to have a birthday. So I'm gonna go ahead and write uh, cb dot had birthday. Now usually it should be popping up right now, but I'm getting an error. It says cannot find cb in scope. And what that means is I define cb inside view did load. So the scope of cb is within these two curly braces. And, and technically it's below where I've defined cb. I couldn't write anything cb above that because I haven't defined it yet. So cb only exists in scope below where I defined it and within these curly braces. So that's called local scope. CB is local to this function. If I wanna make CB accessible to other functions outside, I have to move it up to what's called global in scope. So I, I, it's a global variable. And the way I do that is I just move this from here out of view did load into here. Now the scope of this variable is between these two, uh, sorry, this, this brace and this brace. And I'm gonna actually make this a var so I can change the variable, the variable of it. Okay. And because I haven't written the, the parentheses, I gotta add those parentheses to make those errors go away. So notice now I can access CB because the scope, this variable now, is a global variable. So anywhere within these two braces, I can access it. And this function is within those two braces. So by changing the scope, it changes what can access that variable. Right? So local scope refers to inside a function. Global scope refers to accessible inside the whole class, usually. So let's talk about a principle called shadowing. And shadowing is when you use the same name in two different scopes. So oftentimes you see that uh, when you write structs and you write initializers for structs. So we know that when you write a struct, by default, Swift will create a member-wise initializer for you, so it'll automatically set up an initializer for these three values. But you are free to write your own. So I'm gonna go ahead and do an init. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the parameters of name, whoops, string, age, which is an int, and school, which is a string uh, optional. So I have these three variables here that are name, age, and school, but I have these three variables here that are also name, age, and school. So I could do this name equals name, but it's kind of confusing as to what this name is for, in, in which one I'm referring to. 
So oftentimes you'll put a self dot name in front. Okay? And that avoids that confusion with the two variable names. And again, that's this is the idea of shadowing, using the same variable name for both. Self dot name, whoops, self dot age equals age, and then self dot school equals school. And my errors go away. So the idea of shadowing, I'm using the same name. I could, if I wanted to, I could have put different parameter values like n a oh, sorry n for name a for age and school an s for school but it might get confusing as to what those represent so it's fine to use the same name we just distinguish with a self in front of it if i'm doing that within a struct so that's one example of shadowing another example of, of a commonly used shadowing technique is with optional binding or guarding so to see an example of using shadowing and optional binding let's go ahead and write another quick function Let's write a function uh, to see if a person's graduated from a particular school. So I'm going to go ahead and write func graduated. And of course, if they're able to graduate, they must have mean they're enrolled in school. So the first thing I have to do is to check to see if school is a valid option uh, rather than writing nil. So I could say let um, current, oh sorry, if let, so if let current school equals school. Uh, which is fine, and that's what we've been doing all along, is kind of making these um, variables be something relevant. But it's also perfectly fine to put, to use the same variable name. If let school equals school, then print uh, name, whoops, forgot to put the parentheses, graduated from school. And so what this is another example of optional binding. So if I can unwrap school to a valid value, I print name graduated from school. And this school is this variable here. Okay, you see that they match up. So that's an example of shadowing. I'm using the same variable just to make it more re to more make it more readable. So hopefully that explains a little bit about scope. Remember that it defines where a variable uh, is valid and you can access it from.